Everybody loves it when it's your payday. You love it when it's your payday. The Gucci store loves it when it's your payday. And even the government loves it when it's your payday because that means they get paid too. But what ends up happening to so many people is payday comes, you get excited, you start spending your money, and by the time next payday comes, you spend almost all of your money. Or maybe you decided to splurge on that extra guac and now you have no extra money. Sorry, Guaki. That's why in this video, I want to go over five things you need to stop doing when you get paid, starting with number one, when you get paid, stop wearing your money. See, the problem is most people have their priorities in the wrong place. Everybody says that they want to become wealthy, but most people will have no investments and no wealth, but then spend all their money on cars, clothes, and cute restaurants. The average new car payment at the time of me recording this video in America is $716 a month. Now, what does that mean? That means you're going out and you're financing this $50,000 car, paying $716 a month just to drive the car. This doesn't include insurance. It doesn't include maintenance. It does not include your premium gas, but you're paying $716 a month to finance this car. And in five years, this car is not gonna be worth $50,000. It might be worth $20,000 because your car is not an asset. Your car is a depreciating liability, meaning it is losing value every single day. I mean, the moment you stick your key in the ignition and you drive it off of the lot, it loses like 15 to 20% of its value right there. So now you're paying interest to drive this car and this is $716 a month that's going directly to your car company that's making them richer. But what happens now if you play out this scenario? Five years from now, you're gonna go out and you're gonna realize you no longer have a car payment. So what most people end up doing is instead of now driving a car without a car payment, is now you gotta go ahead and get a new car because it's weird to have a car without a car payment. And so now every month for the next 35 years, you're driving around in a car and you're paying a car payment month after month after month. But if you don't own assets, if you don't own a rental property, if you don't own stocks worth as much as your car, your priorities in the wrong place. Because what happens now if instead of taking the $716 a month and putting it into your car, you take this money and you put it into the stock market and you're not trying to pick stocks, you're just throwing your money into the stock market and you do this for 35 years because you're gonna drive a car for the next 35 years as it is and you can get just an average, actually a little bit below average return of 7% a year. And yes, you can just put your money into an ETF in the stock market and get these types of returns. It doesn't mean that your money has to grow by 7% every year, but on average, we have seen the stock market grow by more than 7% a year over the last century. What does this mean? Well, after 35 years, you would have had $1.2 million, but instead, you got a car that's worth nothing. So now you gotta decide, would you rather have the million dollars or would you rather have a car that looks cool but really isn't worth much? That's the first C, cars. The second C are your clothes. Just take a look at the numbers. The CEO of Louis Vuitton, Bernard Arnault, is arguably the richest person in the world. How did he get so rich? because he's selling you the dream of wanting to be rich when in reality, he's the one that's actually getting rich when you're going out and you're buying the Louis Vuitton. And then you have the third C, which are the cute restaurants, because nowadays we live in a society where the phone eats first. So now what do you do? You go to restaurants, not based off of the food, not based off of how much you pay, but based off of what the aesthetics are that we can post on Instagram and show to all of our friends that don't really care. Hold on, Gwaki, let me take a picture really quick. Now make sure you hear me on this. There's nothing wrong with driving a luxury and exotic and expensive car. There's nothing wrong with wearing expensive clothes. There's nothing wrong with going to very expensive and nice restaurants. But there is something wrong with it if you're struggling with your money, if you don't have any investments, you don't have any cash flow, and now you're trying to spend all of your money on these places and then you're wondering why you're not wealthy. It's because your priorities are kind of misaligned here. The second thing I want you to stop doing when you get paid is stop letting your money die. This is a chart from the college investor showing the average annual returns by asset class between the years of 1985 to 2020. And what you'll see is that the investments or assets that provided the best returns were things like stocks and real estate, and then even bonds. But at the very bottom of this list, you'll see cash, which provided the worst returns. Now I have the article down in the description if you want to read it, but that data ended at 2020, before we saw the huge run up in inflation in 2020, 2021, and into 2022, and even into 2023. So why is cash providing such a low return? Because the value of your cash, your savings is being devalued because of inflation. I mean, you've seen the prices of your rent, to your groceries, to your housing costs, to your travel costs, to your healthcare costs, to your car costs, everything has grown so much. And so now if you take your cash and you just save it, 
and it's sitting there and it's not growing or it's not keeping up with the higher cost of living or the higher inflation, that means your savings are effectively making you poorer each and every day. And this is where, yeah, it's better to save your money than to dump it into a brand new car or into a Louis Vuitton shirt if you're trying to be financially smart. But this is where now there are better things that you can do with your money if you want to actually grow your money. That means if you're putting money aside to save it, you have taken the first step, which is great. But now you got to stop being scared with that money and you have to be willing to take risks with that money if you want to see your money grow and actually build your wealth. And that means taking some of that money and putting it into investments. And these investments can be stocks, it can be real estate, it can be into your own business idea. Now, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of how do you start investing in this video. I have tons of videos on that on my channel, but my team at Briefs Media put together this awesome ebook on how to build wealth as an investor that you can read for free. This ebook starts by talking about how do you build the mindset of an investor, and then it goes into how do you save the first couple thousand dollars, and then it goes into different ways to start investing your money, whether if you want to invest for cash flow, not for cash flow, how do you invest in stocks versus real estate, and then it goes into how do you spend your money smartly, and then it goes into how do you earn Earn your money smartly, then it goes into how do you protect your assets. This ebook is completely free. So if you want to read this ebook, I got the link to how you can download it for free down in the description below. Third, stop blindly following people on the internet. Which you talking about, Jaspreet? You've seen people selling stock picks and get rich quick systems and simple systems to make a lot of money very quickly. But what I want to remind you here is that nothing worth having comes easy. Period. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Building wealth is hard. Period. Investing in money takes time. Period. You need money to invest. Period. And this is where you have to understand that if somebody's selling you this idea of how you can make six figures by doing nothing but sitting on the beach and working four hours a day, well, there might be something wrong with that because why isn't everybody else doing it? Now, here's some reality. Building wealth is very difficult. It takes a lot of work. It takes time. Building a business is hard work. It takes time. Maybe there are ways to do it without working hard, but I haven't been able to figure that out yet. The way that investing works is you got to earn money. Then you take money that you did not spend, which means you got to make some sacrifices. That's hard. And then you take the money that you didn't spend, and now you got to take this and put it into an investment. That's also hard because now you got to figure out where do you invest it? How do you invest it? What is investing? And that means it's also risky because there's a chance that you can lose your money because, of course, investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point. Every investor does. Now, the goal is to make more money than you lose, but you have to be willing to get over the mental hurdle of what happens if I lose $1,000 that I worked so hard to earn. But that's a part of the process because if you don't invest your money and you don't take that risk, you are never going to see the potential gains. Now, yeah, it sucks losing money, but that's a part of the process. And this is where now you have to be willing to invest in yourself. And if you keep just throwing money into these ideas that will hopefully give you these amazing returns without the effort, well, you're going to be making somebody else rich at your expense. And this is where it's very important for you to remember you worked hard to earn this money. You are going to be the one that works to protect it and grow it the most. Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't get a financial advisor or a financial planner. They can be very helpful. However, you are the person that worked to grow this money. Don't just throw it into random places hoping that you're going to be able to turn rich by following this amazing advice that you found on the internet. You've got to be willing to trust your gut and understand that nothing worth having comes easy. This doesn't mean that all online education is bad. I mean, we have some amazing online education at Briefs Media where we go over things like how do you build wealth, but... It's not easy. That's the key that you have to remember. The real secret to success is working hard, taking risks, learning, and keep getting back up. I think it was Dave Ramsey who originally said this, but there's a saying that goes, most people are spending money they don't have to buy things they don't need to impress people they don't even like. And if you're going out and buying things that you can't afford with money that you don't have, now not only are you buying something that's losing your money, but you have to spend tomorrow's income paying it back. I mean, we just saw in America credit card debt hit a brand new record high. What does that mean? That means people are spending money they don't have. And now when you spend money on your credit card, not only do you have to pay this money back, but you have to pay this money back plus interest. And the crazy thing is you've probably heard of people talking about the credit card perks, credit card rewards, credit card benefits. I get those. I use a credit card for pretty much everything. I love spending with my credit card. I get a whole bunch of cash back, I get a whole bunch of rewards, I get a whole bunch of perks, but I've never paid a penny in interest on my credit card. And so if you are paying interest on your credit card, you're paying for everybody else's rewards and perks, not to mention 
all the perks and rewards for the credit card companies because now when they're flying around in private jets is because you are paying for their interest. And this is where you have to make the conscious decision of understanding if I don't have the money to go out and buy something, I should not go out and put it on my credit card because when you put money on your credit card, you are essentially shackling yourself up. You are putting yourself into this financial prison where it is very difficult for you to get out of because not only you have to pay that money back, but you got to pay it back at 19% interest. And now if you're thinking, but Jaspreet, I use buy now, pay later, so I'm not paying any interest. Well, I like to call buy now, pay later, broke now, broke later. And let's think about this for a second. If you went to the bank and you wanted to borrow money for six months, would they give it to you for free? No, they're going to charge you interest. Why does the bank charge you interest? because there's a cost on borrowing money. So now if you use buy now, pay later, and they tell you that you have the 0% APR for a certain period of time, how is it that they can give you this money for free and still be one of the most profitable or money-making cash generating industries in FinTech? How does that make any sense? Well, it's because the buy now, pay later companies know that if you go out and you buy something with buy now, pay later with 0% APR, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go out and buy more stuff because they don't feel any pain of seeing that $1,000 leave your account. It's only $45 leaving your account month after month after month. So now when you only see $45 leaving your account and you still got $955 in your account, now you can go and buy something else. Maybe you go and buy a new sofa, maybe you go and buy a new TV, maybe you go and buy a new laptop because you still got some cash in your account. So number one is you go out and spend more things, and this has been scientifically and mathematically proven, which is why these buy now, pay later companies make so much money. And then number two is they know that when you go out and you spend more money, you're also less likely to pay your stuff off in time. So now when you don't pay your stuff off in time, what happens? You get slapped with a brand new fine, brand new fees. And now you're not paying five or 10% interest, now you're paying 25 to 30% interest on your buy now, pay later, or as I like to call it, broke now, broke later, 0% APR financing. And number five is stop blowing your money, literally on things like alcohol, drugs, and Netflix. Now the alcohol and drugs are kind of obvious and I know this is easy for me to say so I'll kind of give you that disclaimer here because I don't drink, I don't smoke. But if something is not adding value to your life and it's sucking a lot of cash out of your life, you might want to start rethinking if that's something you really need in your life. And even in the business world, when I was getting started in the entrepreneurial space, a lot of people told me, how can you not drink? How are you gonna make these business networks? How are you gonna find people to wanna work with you because everybody goes to these events and drinks? Well, what was interesting is I would go to these events and I would not drink and then people would ask why I'm not drinking and then I would stand up for myself and say, because I don't want to drink, I don't drink. And some people respected that, some people didn't, but I continued to do my own thing and now I work on my terms, not their terms. So no, in the business world, you don't have to drink. You don't have to smoke. And I know it's a hard thing to leave, but if it's sucking a lot of money out of you, maybe that could be a financial reason for you to want to stop. But what about Netflix? How can you tie Netflix into alcohol and drugs? Well, with Netflix, it's not really a financial thing. It's a time suck. Because what ends up happening with Netflix is that the average American statistically is spending over two hours a day watching TV. What is TV? Netflix. And so now if you're spending $15 a month on this TV that you're spending two hours a day watching, the cost isn't the $15 a month. The cost is the two hours of time you are devoting to the TV every single day. That's 60 hours a month. We're talking about over 700 hours a year. If you took that 700 hours a year and you transfigured that time to read books, to learn about how to build wealth, to learn about how to increase your income, to start building your own business, in five years, you would be in a completely different financial space. So yes, Netflix can be a drug because when you're sucked into this idea of I have to come home and I have to unwind for a couple hours, I have to watch TV, I have to just kill brain cells, well, you are also killing your time. And the one asset that none of us can buy more of is time. That is the most valuable asset that everybody has. Rich people, poor people, middle class people, it does not matter. You cannot get more of it. If that is the most valuable asset that you have and our time is slowly ticking away, do you want to spend that time sitting there watching TV or do you want to spend that time building your family's financial future? I'll let you decide. There's no right answer and you can say whatever it is you feel is right for you. But I want you to think about that, especially when it comes to now, how do you grow your income? How do you grow your wealth? Well, 
If you have more time to grow your wealth or you have more time to learn how to grow your wealth, that can completely change your and your family's financial future with just a few years worth of effort and devotion to it. The US News put out this article on what they call the seven best dividend paying ETFs that you can consider buying. Here are the seven ETFs that they recommend. And again, investing has risks. Make sure you always do your own due diligence and never blindly, blindly follow a random guy on YouTube. Number one, SCHD, which is paying out 3.6% a year in dividends. VYH, 